Hello, my sweet summer children. I'm back with the juice to get you through the long night. So HBO did their big one and dropped two trailers for the new season two of House of the Dragon. And you know we about to talk about that. One trailer is the official black trailer for Team Black, Rhaenyra, and those who support the rightful queen of the Seven Kingdoms. And then there was an official green trailer for Team Green for the family of the usurpers and those of you treasonous mofos that support them. In this video, I'm gonna cover both trailers. There's no point in doing like green trailer breakdown, black trailer breakdown. Let's just do it all at once. Let's just do our big one right now. So the trailers are both great. The black trailer has Damon screaming, we fight for our queen over the trailer. And the green trailer has, we fight for the one true king, Aegon. And it's crisp and cold. And he's just out here telling lies, lies, and more lies. The greens, like, they just be lying. But I think this is an interesting choice because Damon is the head of the Black Forces and Kristen Cole is the head of the Green Forces. And that's basically what we're up against. Anyway, so the prelude to the Black trailer has a few shots in it. One of Rhaenyra, the Realm's Delight, firstborn daughter of Viserys Targaryen and Aima Arryn, the rightful queen of the Seven Kingdoms and the protector of the realm. There is also a picture of Daemon Targaryen, prince of Fleabottom, creeping round in his bathrobe. What can be going on to have Daemon Targaryen creeping when he should be sleeping? So I don't know what's going on here. Uh, it seems like he's overhearing something. He's eavesdropping on something or he heard something in the castle and he's trying to figure out what the fuck going on. So we hear we fight for our queen being chanted. And that's Damon, like I said. And there's a clip of one of the Cargyle twins fighting in the castle, likely Dragonstone. And it looks to be in someone's bedroom, a very nice bedroom, likely Rhaenyra's bedroom. And this is likely... An assassination attempt on Rhaenyra that failed, that's gone bad. I feel like most assassination attempts in Game of Thrones or in this universe, they, they all go bad. Let's bring it back. Let's bring it back. We then get a shot of a dragon in the rain. And there is only one dragon with a neck like that. The throat goat, first of his name, Caraxes. We're going to break down this rain scene in a second because they give us more information once we see the green trailer, but this is Heron Hall. This is Heron Hall. Um, there looks to be like a funeral going on on Dragonstone. This is likely for Luke and Arax. I'm thinking the piece of Arax that washed up on the shore in the book. So in the books, it says like a piece of the dragon washed up on the shore, but they never found Luke. So I think Rhaenyra is there collecting what she can, what remains of her kid. I speculated this in the first trailer when we had those shots of Rhaenyra at Storm's End. She's looking for some remnants of her son. We have Rhaenyra, her sons, Joffrey and Aegon, Bela and Reyna, Rhaenys and Corlys Valerian. I'm not sure who that is that's lighting the funeral pyre. It doesn't look like it's Damon though. I think Damon's already gone. It shows Rhaenyra looking down at the pyre, rightfully so, very emotional. And she says, my father chose me, his firstborn child, to succeed him. And this is true, queen. We all heard it. We all heard it. Whether you're black or green, you know he wanted his daughter to be his heir. Um... But not only did we like hear and see him name her his heir, we seen him drag himself off of his deathbed and make a long walk to the throne. And if you've read the books, them serpentine steps ain't nothing to play with. And he was walking to the throne to squash any idea that he changed his mind about anything. And that's why the Greens are so out of line here. She said that he held his decision until death. He never changed his mind, which is again true, Queen. We all seen it. We all heard it. So this next shot is what looks to be Heron Hall. And if that's Heron Hall, this body of water is the God's eye. And this island is the motherfucking Isle of Faces. And you can see the Isle of Faces is peppered with red leaves, weirwoods, weirwoods everywhere. So the Isle of Faces is an ancient island of weirwood trees. The Isle of Faces is where it's said that the children use their dark magic to bring down the hammer of the waters. It's also said that the children in the first men made the pact on the Isle of Faces and carved a face in every weirwood tree. 
The Isle of Faces is also home to the Order of the Green Men. The Isle of Faces will be featured in House of the Dragon and so will the Green Men and I can't fucking wait to see what kind of treasure trove we unlock up in there. Well, it should. It should if they don't cut that part out. But anyway, I don't think they're gonna put, cut that part out. The dragon here looks like Cyrax, but Cyrax and Sunfire look a lot alike, so I'm not 100% sure, but it's likely it's Rhaenyra has flew up to Harrenhal after Damon has taken it. So there's a shot of Rhaenyra, I think, or Rhaenys talking to a woman with long brown hair. I don't know who they are or where they are. It looks more like King's Landing than Dragonstone. Um, it doesn't look like King's Landing or Dragonstone, but if I had to choose one, it would be King's Landing. So we see a shot of Cyrax on the beach. This is not the Isle of Faces, even though it's cut to make you think that it might be. It's actually the Stormlands. You can see Storm's End in the background. You can see Rhaenyra is off of the dragon and she looks to be pulling something from the water. And Cyrax is hollering, so it's probably Arax, a piece of Arax or a piece of Jace. We'll see. We then get a shot of the Pretender, the Usurper, gallivanting, snapping his cape as he sits the throne that he does not belong on. He's giving very much Joffrey Baratheon. There is also a shot of a feast. I'm not sure who these three people are at the end of the table, but I'm thinking they may be some of the dragon seeds. The dragon seeds are Targaryen bastards that Rhaenyra invites to attempt to ride the riderless dragons if the dragon will have them. It doesn't seem like a complicated thing, but baby, <laughs> it's not an easy thing to ride a dragon. I'm also confused as to if this is the dragon seeds, why isn't Nettle here? Why is this Nettle's here? I do see Bela is, and they have Bela riding Moon Dancer. so what are they doing with Nettle's? This scene is cut with Damon, like smiling, but Damon is not at this table, so it's not the same scene. There is also a shot of the dragon keepers as Rhaenyra is walking to Cyrax. Then we get some shots of the North, and it's a man saying the realm will soon tear itself apart if men don't remember the oaths they swore to King Viserys and his rightful heir. And the person talking is... Prince Jacaris Valerion, Prince of Dragonstone, heir to the Iron Throne after his mom. It looks like there, there, there's like a snowy march to the wall and Jace is just along for the ride. This shot looks like Craig and Stark, Lord of Winterfell and Jacaris Valerion at the wall. So I'm thinking what happens is when Jace visits uh, Winterfell, like they're like, oh, he's not here. He's at the wall. And they go to the wall that's where he meets Kragen, or he goes with Kragen to take new recruits to the wall or some shit like that. For some reason, the wall is in here and it's important. And I love that shit. I love that they're going to include like all the prophecies and the White Walkers and the wall type shit. I love it. Love it. Love it. And the Children of the Forest with the Isle of Faces. This this season going to be crazy. But Jace talking to Kragen about tearing the realm apart, that whole bit, it makes sense it would come from Jace because it's likely that he knows the prince who was promised prophecy and because the North remembers and winter is coming and the realm does not need to be divided. I'm so excited to see Craig and Stark. Like the Lord of Winterfell, he's young. He's like the same age as Jon Snow was when he became King of the North. And it's going to be interesting to see the Northern politics during the time of the dragon because all we have when it comes to Northern politics is what Ned Stark and them had going on. And we saw how what happened there. Um, then we see a knight dressed in his high tower armor about to get roasted by a dragon. I'm thinking this is Maylie's the Red Queen. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Um, the dragons, like, it's hard to, to tell who they are from far away, but I'm pretty sure this is Maylie's. But anyway, somebody gets blown the fuck off their horse. Then we get a shot of Aemon of House 1738 and then Otto Hightower. We also get a shot of Corliss Valerion, Big Daddy Sea Snake, and it looks like he's in Driftmark. He's in Driftmark, and he's talking to Rhaenyra. He tells her she must crush this beast at its head, and she's talking, and he's talking about the Greens. Then we get a shot of Damon in full armor. It's raining. 
It's about to get real. I cannot contain myself. This is cut with like a daytime scene of Damon giving his war terms to surrender or burn. And then it cuts to a funeral possession. But let's go back to Damon real quick. Because I feel like this scene, the, these couple of clips, is really giving Aegon the Conqueror. So Aegon the Conqueror, if you know the story, like he goes and he tells Black Heron, like, surrender or when night falls, your line will end. Like, I will end your whole house. And he then burns Heron Hall. But... This is giving, like, he's giving the terms during the day, and then he attacks the castle while it's raining at night. It's v giving very much Egg on the Conqueror vibes, and I'm here for it. Then we get a shot of what looks to be Bela riding her dragon, Moon Dancer. Moon Dancer is described as a slender, pale green dragon with pearl horns and chest. We see men riding to battle, and Rainey's basically saying, burning people and giving way to reason. You won't, soon you won't remember why the war started in the first place. And then Aegon is about to hit someone with the club. His guard is side eyeing him like, oh my God, what on earth have we done here? We have a shot of what I think is Damon, but I'm not sure. I think he's taking another castle with the Riverlands. Ba da Damon basically takes the Riverlands so easily. It's just, there's just no contest. So one of the Karogal twins they're fighting again and Rhaenyra is looking out at the sunset Rhaenyra also says that she fears what has begun any person that is smart should fear going to war against a family that has two drag that has both sides has dragons it's you, the this is the beginning of the end of a powerful dynasty now Let's flip to the green trailer. So we have a picture of Alicent, Aegon, Aemond, and Vagar, with Christian Cole shouting some nonsense about the one true king. Boy, shut your lying ass up. Crispin Cole really gets on my nerves. And we have the soiled knight in the same clip riding his horse into battle. We then have a shot of the most devout queen mother in the sept lighting candles, praying for peace after she started a rebellion with her lies. I don't know how she how she can with a straight face say that Viserys changed his mind. I mean, she's delusional and she's in denial and whatever, girl, whatever makes you feel better about what you're doing. We also get a shot of the dragon pit with its domed roof um, and then... Allison is talking to Laris Clubfoot. You can see his little ruffled sleeves and his cane. So she states only a few weeks ago her lord husband was alive and the realm was at peace. That's true. In King's Landing, the green and gold banners are being placed around the city. Like, what? Is that something that people even have time for? Like, let's be for real. We're going to war. Everyone Get all the seamstresses together in the city and have them sew golden dragons onto green banners. It's like they just recycled House Tarly banners and just put the green dragon on it. Like, how did they get all that together? That's not even important. I'm sorry. Anyway, there is also a shot of what looks to be a council meeting. Otto is present, so this is likely early in the season. Allison is going on and on about the king changing his mind on his deathbed, knowing the realm would never accept a queen. Girl, stop lying to yourself. You are delusional. We have Aegon walking to the throne. Otto is there, and Otto looks nervous. I wonder fucking why. I wonder why you look nervous. He's probably about to get fired they have scorpions on the walls of king's landing i guess as a defense against possible dragons and there's a shot of damon in the riverlands with a large force otto is telling allison that they aren't doing what they're doing for the good of the realm they are doing it for the satisfaction of vengeance sir do not throw stones if you live in a glass house. And a wise man once said, 
that if you live in a glass house, you should watch your mouth. You aren't usurping the throne for the good of the realm. You are forsaking the last will of the king you swore to serve to put your own blood on the throne. So don't expect Rhaenyra just to step aside and let you have it for the good of the realm. If you gave a fuck about the good of the realm, you would have packed your high tower spawn up and took them back to Old Town. But instead, you let the king's body rot in bed while you plotted how to steal the throne. There is a scene of a gate and a guard and someone looking to sneak in. Then we see two lads in a tunnel. Must be blood and cheese. We have Aegon talking about people plotting against him and how he will pay them back a hundred times over. I think Aegon is going to be like the Mad King, Joffrey, Viserys, that type of character. Then we get a shot of his armor with the crown of the Conqueror on his helm. It looks like the king is talking to Larys Clubfoot, but also someone says, I'm as fearsome as any of them. And you know what? <laughs> I think that's Aegon the Second that's saying that. And I think he doesn't like people sleeping on him. And he's about to show them what he's made of. But then we get a shot of Sunfire in the Dragon Pit at King's Landing. It looks also like the floor has been repaired in the Dragon Pit. Sunfire is supposed to be the most beautiful dragon in the known world ever to have lived. A golden dragon with pink membranes and to me i often can't tell sunfire and uh cyrax apart so i don't know who that is at the dragon pit but i would think it's sunfire because it's gold then we get a shot of the queen mother with Aegon talking about the sacrifices that were made to put him on the throne honor was definitely sacrificed now what else then there is a rainy shot of a dragon flying over a castle and men running the castle is indeed heron hall i don't know i love this the darkness the dragon flying the rain falling it's gonna be so sick damon taking heron hall then we cut from there to a scene of aemon saying to crispin cole my uncle is a challenge i welcome if he dare face me boy fucking bye damon will carve you like cake the only reason like please be so fucking for real like i'm not even gonna get into that but i think that scene is funny there is a shot of aemond at night and i think this is him returning from storm's end about to deliver the news that he killed luke this news is not gonna make anybody happy except except for maybe like aegon Aegon might be happy about it, but nobody else. Nobody else is going to be happy. All the mature people, all the people that know what something like that means, they're not going to be happy first. Aemon, you are now a kinslayer, and no man is more accursed than a kinslayer. But also, also, let us not forget, let us not forget that... That's what starts the real war. Right now, everybody's sending ravens. They're trying to gather armies. But now you have killed Queen Rhaenyra's son. The, the, the rightful heir to Driftmark, you have killed him. And now the real war is about to start. Fire and blood and nobody's safe. Nobody's safe now. This is devastating news to both sides of this. And I'm um, very interested to see how it plays out when they find out about this. Because as it says in the trailer, the only path from here is violence. This is likely a shot of people mourning the baby prince. And Alicent crying for her slain grandchild. Otto is talking about prevailing and bringing peace. L O L L O L L M A O. So we get a shot of the Brackens in the Blackwoods fighting in the Riverlands. There is a shot of Crispin walking to the battlements of some castle, probably Duskendale. There is also a lady with a blanket, a bloody blanket, likely a handmaiden done found a surprise that blood and cheese left. Aegon looks excited to go to war. We get a shot of the big back she dragon, Vagar. And I kind of understand why the Greens are so confident in it. They are only confident because they do have Vagar. They do have the biggest living dragon. Uh, but they need really need to chill out because they, they shouldn't be wanting to do this to their self. 
Then we get a shot of more people riding to war. We get a shot of King's Landing and Alicent. She's talking about all her life. She endured to serve her house in the realm and somehow none of it matters. Alicent seems to be sad and she's going to be like emo this season going through a depression. Like things are not going to be good for her this season. She has no idea what she started and what it'll cost her. I can't tell who this dragon is. It may be Cyrax. It looks like a brown dragon, though, which the only brown dragon of our own hair is Sheep Stealer or Vermithor. Vermithor is kind of kind of considered brown. Um, the small green dragon is Moon Dancer. That's a Moon Dancer. That's Bela's dragon. And then it ends with another dragon. And I'm not sure if this is Silverwing or Sea Smoke. I think it's one of the riderless dragons because someone has like a stick at it, like poking it with a stick. I don't know. Maybe it's Helena's dragon, Dreamfire. Who knows? We will find out in due time. So if you guys have made it this far, listen, listen, listen. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. P turn your notifications on because I'm going to be dropping dragon videos left and right leading up to House of the Dragon. So if that's something you're into, make sure you subscribe. Hit that notification bell. As always, thanks for watching. Okay, my sweet summer children. Have a good day.